Trent, how the how the two boys had the injuries, the the knees. Yeah, they're good. They're uh, um, they've been in uh, the last few days. They got uh, a point. Uh, they got operation on Friday. Um, they'll be holding hands uh, going through Friday and Saturday and uh, for quite a while uh, to come. So uh, they're in good spirits um, and sort of want to start the first step on Friday. Are their injuries pretty much exactly the same? Or? No, slightly different. Same result in the end. You know, there's a little bit more meniscus in Sam's, which is why, um, you know, he couldn't walk off. It got locked up. Uh, um, but the end result will be the same. It'll be uh, both ACL repairs. And how do you how do you plan on um, dealing with that on the field this week? What's who, who plays a Radley like role for you? Yeah, it's pretty simple. We've uh, we've got Nat Butcher, who's a top end player, and he's proven that over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, and now uh, it's a great opportunity for him. Uh, to step into that role this uh, on Thursday night. So, um, you know, it's obviously, uh, th there's things that aren't ideal, but then it creates opportunity for, for guys to grow within your squad. So uh, that's been our focus. Does it affect the mood of the players? I mean, two players, one player going down base, ACL is bad enough, but for two players, um, you know, just the, the mood of the rest of the camp, the rest of the personnel. And secondly, do you think the other clubs might think it's a bit of a leveller? I mean, you've come back from COVID, one five straight. Now you've got this, you know, this uh, uh, pit of injuries. It might be a great leveler for the Roosters. I, I don't think you agree with that. But what, what's your thoughts? Well answered, Margie. Um, uh, the second one first. Um, they can think what they want. Um, uh, there's been, and, and that's good. There's enough commentary out there, but we'll deal with it uh, in our own way, uh, and we know what our squad uh, is capable of. Uh, and then the mood, I think I was pretty honest after the game about how I felt during, um, during the game and then after the game. And I think it was quite uh, clear to see that uh, other players felt that. Uh, but we came in on Sunday, dealt with it on Sunday, uh, talked about it uh, briefly, uh, and then we moved forward, which is what, um, is, which is what we do. Hey Trent, Hugo from Fox here. There have been a lot of injuries around the whole of the competition. Do you have a um, theory on why, or do you think it's just an unusual circumstance? Uh, yeah, I don't have a theory. Uh, we, we look at our own uh, and we analyse our own and, and we'll go through what we think uh, we need to do to be better in, in our areas and we'll, we'll do that. Um, uh, you know, we've done that this week uh, and then we move on. We, we, we haven't analyze the whole competition. Um, uh, I think, uh, you know, that's for the NRL to have a look at. Uh, and also, um, you know, so any of the sort of uh, the groups of obviously medical um, CMOs to, to discuss as well. There has been a, a case made that the lack of prep time before the um, May 28 restart was a factor. You were part of the Project Apollo um, meeting in groups um, before the season restarted. Do you guys foresee this at all? Uh, there was discussions about preparation time uh, leading in, uh, and, but there was also, um, don't forget, they were training uh, during that period. There was no contact. Uh, they were training on their own. So, uh, yeah, we understood um, there's so many factors. Uh, that's the thing I'd say. There's so many factors that go into it. Um, and to be able to pinpoint a, a area is extremely difficult uh, to almost impossible. Um, so uh, a culmination of, of different areas, um, are the, the, they're the discussions that we've had. Uh, and then we go, okay, what can we uh, nullify or fix? Uh, and then let's move forward. Simply that's our approach. Trent, um, obviously Victor Radley's played such a ball playing role for you at Lock there this year. I mean, do you, do you look at Nat Butcher and think he can he can play that similar role, or as uh, it fall on someone else to do something similar? Or how do you see it? No, I see Nat being himself. He's a great player in his own right, uh, and 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 he'll continue to do that. I don't want anybody to be anybody else. Uh, and you know, I've been asked those questions, but you just have to, you know, people will judge. Uh, us on, on, on how we uh, play um, 
uh, and we understand we've lost two really good players and good people, um, but that won't stop us. We'll, we'll keep moving forward and keep developing our game over the course of the next few months as well. There's been so much made of Victor's injury, but obviously Sam's plays it makes it has a different impact in terms of in terms of Jake. Yeah. Do you, how do you manage Jake through the season as far as the 80 minutes go? Or like I know you got Freddie Lassick on your extended bench, or yeah, what, what's your plan there? Uh, same for most players. You know, Jake plays a certain style of footy. Uh, he's played games where he's played 27 in the season, uh, and uh, but I also understand uh, that we'll play other people in that position as well at different times. So uh, like Jake, but like other players, um, there will be uh, whoever's asked to play in certain positions will play. Do you have, because obviously like Victor can play a bit of Booker, but he's obviously out as well. I mean, is, is Orbe the kind of guy, I know he's mixed fix it, could he slot into that? Or is it someone from outside your normal 17, like, a, like I say, Freddie Lussick or someone else, I don't know. Well, Freddie's a traditional hooker, so his his development's important. Um, Orbo's played there at different times. I can't remember which year he played. Uh, could have been 17 or, you know, he, he, play, he played that role at different times. Um, so... Um, He's not adverse to it, but he's not a he's not a, a traditional stand-in hooker. They're replacement hookers. Robo, can I ask, mate, what it is about coaching against Craig Bellamy teams that you, that you find most challenging as a coach yourself? No, I don't find it challenging. Um, you know, it's not. There's nothing there for me that. Um, we get excited about playing every opponent. I don't rise and fall based on the opposition coach. I think the consistency in performance is around um, respecting every coach and team that you come up against, uh, and then you attack uh, attack them how you want to. And I think that's there's been no difference for me uh, against any other opponent. And that's where you try and if you if you change the way that you coach for an opposition coach then you, you, you're heading in the wrong direction. Do different coaches have their signature on a side? Like obviously yes. your side have a certain signature, right? Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's a different question is what does the, co what will the coach be saying to a team during the week, uh, during the year, and how does that come out on the field? Then you go, okay, this is the way that they play. Um, this is how we'll uh, nullify that. And this is how we want to attack it. Um, but that doesn't shift um, based on, uh, that goes into your method of game planning for an opposition, but it doesn't change based on um, the, 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 uh, the experience of a coach. Okay, just following up on what Nick said, I was just going to ask a couple of questions about Storm too. But, um, I mean, there's a certain thing about the Storm and, and the Roosters. I mean, you've got five of the last eight premierships between you. Um, and this is the first time in two years you haven't got Cooper Cronk. Do you think there's any kind of change of elements in the relationship? Do you think it's building just sort of because you are benchmark teams? Or what do you put your finger on why we love this Roosters Storm clash? Well, I think it's because of um, the, the history that you've said. We've, we've played in big games. We've been in big games. Um, uh, so I think that the external view is, is that for us, um, you know, it's... A Thursday night game, which is to start the week. Uh, we understand the opponent that we're playing, um, but you know, as I said, we will attack them as if we're playing any of the other 14 teams, um, and we want to go at them uh, in our style, in a Roosters style, and we want to game plan against what they want to do. That's that'll be our method. Trent, you, you've talked of, in, recently, there's been a few articles done about how you give players a choice, you know, to they've got a choice within the structure. Am yeah. I drawing too long of a bow to say that goes back to some of the, like the, like the Parramatta teams of the 80s, the Raiders teams of the 90s, that, that seem to be very similar. Am I drawing too long of a bow to make a comparison with that choice within your structure and similarities to the way things they used to do with their with their players and their, their styles um yeah I don't, I don't know about those nick but I'd, I'd say you I mean you follow a lot of sport around the world as well and i feel like 
Uh, we're continuing to try and push ourselves to, to coach better and the players are pushing themselves to play better. Um, and so in that, what we're trying to do is um, we want to wholeheartedly believe in our style of play. So that's first of all what we want to do. We believe in the way that we play. Uh, we believe in the intensity that we play with and the focus that we play with. But then on the back of that, um, how does Joey Manu and Jarrod Weira Hargraves be themselves on that footy field? And they've got two different personalities, positions. And so how do you express that within a team of 13 on the field or 17 or, or your squad of 36? So um, there's all that, this is who we are. We believe in who we are, but also we want you to be yourself. We want you to express your personality on top of that, the things that you love to do in the, um, in the game, but it must go hand in hand with our style of play. And I think that's... Um, you know, I love watching teams around the world that, that do that, but they also, I, I know the personality of each individual player that I'm watching play. Like I, I, uh, I love watching, you know, whether it's Liverpool who've just won the title, um, but then you'll watch, you know, whether it's uh, Robertson at the back or Salah up uh, in the midfield, you'll watch their own unique style and... and um, that's, you know, Klopp's done an amazing job in doing that. And so there's that continual search to offer that to players whilst being a team, being an absolute team. Trent, you, um, like the, I'd say the Patriots, apologies for going on this angle, but, you know, in the, in the NFL, do you see that? I mean, are they a similar sort of style when you talk about, are you looking at teams sort of across all sports? So, yeah, so an amazing organisation in the way that they did that. Um, you know, their mantra of do your job. So they absolutely, it's the Patriots way. So you had to play their style. Now you can debate the personalities coming out the other end, I guess, on how much freedom was given within that. Um, and so that's uh, where it slightly differs, I think. You know, if you've got a, a Guardiola team of Man City, where he's really trying to mould all those different players or Barcelona in their own way. Um, yeah, I think, you know, what um, Kansas City did this year in allowing that to happen was a really good example. But longevity has come through people understanding the team and the principles that they play for. Thanks, mate. Hey, Trent, did you, did you visit any of these um, English teams on your World Club Challenge trip at the start of the year? Uh, Barcelona. We went to uh, Barcelona and their academy uh, and watched, uh, watched the game and, and visited the stadium and their organisation. So that was uh, a big part of our trip. Uh, England, we didn't, it was a shorter time there. So we went and watched Man U play. Um, some staff went and visited different ones, but you know, it's amazing to go and watch, um, you know, either meet the coaches, uh, visit different organisations. Um, but you don't ever want to copy. You just want to take different lessons from all of those and put it in to a rooster's DNA. Can I ask you just two quick ones on, on team stuff? One, um, Margie. Pilas is, Pilas, sorry, a very quick one. Pilas is back. Um, yep. Uh, I'm just thinking, I'm not watching him obviously, but just thinking going from playing four games on the Warriors and coming back to you guys, is there any mix up in his head about structures and set plays or did you have to, you know, I, I see you've named him on his bench, yep. uh, on your bench, sorry, because um, obviously his form was great with the Warriors. Yeah, so, I mean, Poe's been with us uh, for six years. Um, so he's been here since an SG ball uh, player, uh, you know, won the competition in 2014 won the 20s in 2016. So I guess you can see, you know, four weeks away over a six year period, um, you know, he's one of us. I was really proud of what he did and I know uh, Warriors were very thankful for that as well. You know, and he gave his all for the club, um, but now he's back and he's, you know, he's back home. My other one was just very quickly on, on Jacks and um, uh, Jerome Hughes. It's fairly new, I'm mean, obviously a very new halves. What do you make of that? Because you haven't played against that kind of halves combo before. Yeah, they've. I mean, they've obviously played quite a bit uh, for them uh, at different times. They're not. Um, they're not young. They're not new to their system. Um, so uh, you know, we've studied them, as I said, to, about 
Nick before we started their, studied their uh, what they were going to what they're going to play and their style of play and how that will fit into um, into their system uh, and then what we want to do to 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 defend and pressure that. Craig, how Craig um, rival clubs are, are knocking on the door to get Craig given out that he's um, developed so much as a coach. Yeah, I think it's normal, Danny. I think um, uh, he's a high quality coach. Um, and I think there's no doubt that, that, that people are going to come and ask that question about Fitz, um, and they should. Um, but then, I, you know, as I think as Fitz said, he's also, uh, you have these discussions around contract time. It's not the first time people, you know, are going to leave the organisation, but um, Fitz is as rooster as rooster can be, and, and that's his bond to this place is really important to him as well. So I think he knows he's going to get offers in the future, but he also feels, uh, you know, he, he, he gave his word and, and his word's very important to him. Um, and we'll continue to do what we do. I imagine you think he's ready if he wanted to go somewhere. Yeah, Fitzy's, Fitzy's ready. You know, as I think as I said, I think whether it's a, a head coaching role or, a, you know, the, the guy's played enough rep footy as it is as well like you know representative coaching uh for him is uh he's also done that and been in that arena he's obviously with the state of origin he's done country uh, he's done australia as well um you know he leads well so uh he's ready